We all need a creative boost now and then, and one of the resources for that is Quilt Shop and Classes. I'm Bonnie McCaffrey, and thanks so much for coming back for another vidcast. This month, I am here with Don Farrier from the Creation Station in Buellton, California. Hi, Dawn. Hi. And as you can tell, Dawn is a bit of a creative soul. She, and, you know, the more you talk to her, the more you realize how <laughs> creative she is. Well, right now, we're going to celebrate Christmas in July. Now, tell me a little bit about your Christmas tree you have here, because it's not a Christmas tree out of the forest. No, and the funny thing is it's actually perfect for Christmas in July because my Christmas tree is actually made out of a recycled tomato cage. The tomato cage itself is just covered in strips of fabric tied with a half-hitch knot on there. And you've got these great Christmas balls made from fabric. Yep, these are old school. Uh, my mom actually makes these for us in our shop, and they're a, a styrofoam ornament, and the fabric is actually uh, just poked in and held in place by friction. There's no glue. There's no pre-carving any of it out. Uh, she does it with a, a little teeny tiny screwdriver, a 3 30 seconds inch screwdriver is what she tucks all of that oh in there. Oh my gosh. And you even embellish them with, um, oh, I guess those are pins and buttons. They're sewing pins and buttons. I, I got to tell you, your first ornament won't be the piece to resistance so there's a learning curve there just you like sure? your first quilt's not going to be a blue ribbon so the wider the gaps the more you're getting the hang of it then you can really fill in with different trims you can use buttons they can be heirloom pieces whatever you want to kind of hide the the multitude of sins that might be there until you get the hang of it too much fun now I see these other little Christmas trees we got over here. This is a styrofoam uh, cone. The Christmas tree is made the same way where you're just uh, pressing in the pieces of fabric and we just plunk them around the shop. Some of them are decorated with little buttons. Some of them have the pins on them, but um, and they're great. And you can also use the little yo-yos. Those yo-yo makers are so hot right now. You can take the little yo-yo makers and take the little green yo-yos and just press them in with the pins and you can actually almost make like a scalloped look around it like a regular Christmas tree. Um, we all have secret pals we want to impress them do something special um, this is an old Vogue uh, oh. sewing pattern we just take the cover and if you use an old iron most of the old patterns are sealed actually using like a, a heat sensitive glue yeah. so if you use an iron it loosens up the glue so you don't damage the pattern oh, perfect. It's wrapped around the box oh. this is a bow made out of a vintage tailors tape uh, they're a little hard to find but you can use uh, anything that's a cloth measuring tape or any ribbon or you can uh, to get the ribbon that's pre-printed so it doesn't yeah. have to be vintage and I made it the same way you used to when you were a kid with those little bow the makers, bow maker. the little tack thing, and you're like plunk and turn it and plunk. Ugh. And then I've I've wired it off in the back, and then the back of this has a, a, a lapel pin glued on it so that you can uh, take it off and they can use it as a corsage as well. Also with the dress uh, patterns, this is the inside instruction sheet. Right. So of course you're a little limited perhaps by the size of the box or sew them together, and that's wrapped up. But what I liked about this one is the ribbon is actually old thread and it is you know the friends that you have that know that you quilt and they come and bring you your their old thread and you're thinking yeah thank you but no I'm not really going to quilt with that no I took three spools I put them on a pencil I held down the top and I wrapped it vroom, 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 and then I, I turned the it the bows made the same way wrap it around an old deck of playing cards like you used to make those uh, lion heart wreaths with the old yarn works the exact same way uh, next use what you've got. This is an oatmeal container inside here. Anything that'll fit inside there. This is the tissue packing paper out from the pattern. Tie a little bow with a scrap of fabric, chop up the top. You're good to go. Okay, so here's a, a gift sack that we're recycling. Uh -huh. It had a little Santa Claus on the front of it with one of those little foam tapes that made it stick out, but he was all crunched up. He's, of course, he's recycled. So I pulled him off, used the tissue paper, accordion folded it like you used to do with your kids to make the construction poinsettias out of the red paper, um, folded it the same way, clipped off a few of the little bobble fringe balls and glued it on there. And the tissue that's inside is actually the... Um, tissue yeah. from the old dress maker. Um, this isn't something you're going to want to do for every Christmas project, but this is a, a, a brown paper sack from your grocery store that's cut open. You use the wrong side. This is a decorative stitch off your sewing machine that we never really use as quilters with a yes, corresponding we do. thread. Yes, okay, we do. Some of us do. <laughs> Not all of us do. Um, <laughs> this one is one of my favorites, and I can't take full credit for this. This is uh, actually a customer shipped us uh, a special little treat, but the shred that's in here is actually her kids school homework on lined notebook paper with the handwriting on it. I covered the lid with uh, hot glue and just a piece of fabric and my bow, I love my bow, I it's, a, it's it. a wad of polymer clay that I don't do polymer clay but I had a 
thing of it laying around. And then I shoved paper clips into it and made like a funky little bow out of it. This is too cute. Well, now we're getting to the really easy ones. So if you're not creative, everybody's done the little um, jars, you know, covered the yeah. jars. My grandma saves all of her jars, even the little, I love the little tiny ones, like the artichoke hearts and the little oh, olive yeah. jars. So if you want to make something, we do spice nuts and my husband and I make spice nuts each year. I really don't want to make this many spice nuts for everybody we want to give gifts to. So we buy the, the peppermints, but um, we put them in the smaller jars. We use the jumbo rickrack, which is really in right now, and a micro rickrack to match, cover the top, tie it. And then this is just those cheesy uh, labels that you get at Staples. We did a custom little label that says from the Farrier family. Yeah. On some of our other ones, we'll actually put the recipe on the back for our spice nuts. Um, and then this little guy, uh, I think we're gonna demo this. A little recycled gift bag. I am not all that sparkly, although you might think I am. I'm a little bit more um, kitschy than, than bling. But I, I used a <laughs> scrapbook punch and I punched out the jumbo snowflake and I, I top stitched over the top of it in like a, a iridescent thread. And then I glued it on there and inside what we used for the shred, this is cute for little gifts. This is that packing stuff that comes in the fruit basket at work that you oh, like, you know, yes. you eat the good stuff and then you don't know what to do with the rest of it. And then just to top it off, this is a paper um, snowflake. And this is, I think, what we're going to show you. Even though this is paper, this is a fabulous project with your iron and some white cotton fabric. And you can make your own original appliques for um, holiday quilts. Cool. And then you just tuck this in the top. And you got holiday to go. Perfect. Love this. Okay, here's a holiday garland. This is made out of uh, number five pearl cotton. It comes on a skein. It's really inexpensive. One skein will actually make two nine-foot garlands. And garlands usually come in nine feet. And this is a single crochet with just uh, your scrap box. If I chose white buttons because I'm going to probably put it on a green tree. These are um, bottle caps. And so we everything on my treat, my own personal treat home, is completely recycled. It's a bunch of weird little whatnots. But so she does a caps. lot of drinking. We got uh, Bud Light, Corona Light. She's a light drinker. You can. I actually, <laughs> I don't drink, but my husband does. Okay, he good. vibes every once in a while with his beer. His are, his are hoity-toity beers. But um, you can go to your local mom and pop bar and tell them, take them this and show them, <laughs> and they will normally save it for you as long as you're diligent about going back and getting them. And then just wash them out with some mild soap and water. If they're a Too little much. bent, from them pulling them off because they're not as as, as uh, precise at removing them at the bar as they are at your hubby at home when you're telling them don't bend the cap too much. Maybe it'll you be just take then. a little wooden dowel <laughs> and you put it a little one inch wooden dowel fits in the back and you just tap it with a hammer and it flattens it out on a little wood surface and then the tops of these of course you need a little hole drilled in it so you just stand it up on end. My dad drills all these for me for my mama and drills right through the backside on the top and then on the bottle cap to keep it hanging uh, forward yeah. you do need to do a little double crochet on the top to tack it on the buttons it's not necessary but if you want to keep the a bottle cap straight you're too cute that's all right this is a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper this is 20 pound it was the lightest they had at uh, the office supply store when I got here to do this I didn't have any with me so you're going to fold it on a diagonal you're going to end up working with a square okay so I folded it on the diagonal and you're going to cut so you end up with your triangle. You want to take your triangle and fold it again so it's in quarters, but you want it in quarters on the diagonal, on point, ladies, on point. All right, and it's on gonna, point. On point. Okay. Get your on quilt point. lingo in there, even though we're working paper. <laughs> okay, and you're gonna want to fold this in thirds, and you do want kind of a precise point. So I put my thumbnail in at the beginning. I see. Okay, Shazam. Okay, so into thirds. Into thirds. So now Once we've got like 12 thirds, points or something. This has the points on this side. This is the side that has the flat part where you would see the edge of the square. Okay. Technically, this is all the space you have to work with. So you're going to be able to cut in from side to side as long as you don't cut all the way across. Of course, if you cut all the way across, right. plunk, you, the snowflake is gone. Start at the bottom. I'm going to cut off my tip on a diagonal, and that's going to make the center of my snowflake open so that mm -hmm. you can see through it. And you can either um, flip from side to side. So now I'm going to cut on the back side, and I'm going to just cut out a chunk. These uh, scissors, I happen to love these. They are a small, spring-loaded, very fine tip. They're great for applique. Um, I don't recommend using your same paper scissors with your same applique scissors. You can cut these in round shapes. You can cut them in straight shapes. You can cut them as close or as far apart, as chunky as you want your snowflake. So now I'm going to flip this over and do something we'll all recognize, like you would cut out your hearts for your valentine. I'm going to cut a big heart out of this side. 
And now to finish it off, if you want your snowflake more round, you can stick more with this shape because of course we folded it into six now. So when you open it, it's gonna be more hexagon shape. I want something with a little more point. So I'm trying to cut this on a wee bit of a diagonal. Ta-da. All right, now the unveiling. So you open this up. And I must admit, I'm, I, uh, I do a lot more intricate, intricate designs when I have the time to get really close, use some lighter paper. Oh, that is so much Okay, fun. so you've got your, uh, your heart in there, you've got your center point. You can iron this out. Um, because it's lightweight, anybody that's in an office or has those acoustic ceiling panels, we actually have these hanging uh, in our shop from the acoustic ceiling panels with a little tiny thin, uh, the clear thread that you use for your applique so you don't want anyone to see. Just to liven everything up. And again, transfer this over to quilting. Use a little best press, press out your fabric, get a real clean edge making those folds. Use your fine applique scissors. You can cut out any shape that you want. Then you can go back and use a, a fusible, whatever choice you have for pre-cut shapes. And then you can iron and do fusible applique, Beautiful. do large ones, do needle turn. It's a, it's a really unique way because in Mother Nature, they're all one of a kind, just like us. Yes, just like us. You are really a creative person. And it, well, and no wonder <laughs> you named your shop The Creation, the Creation Station. Station. Indeed. Yes. And let me just ask you, I'm going to throw you a little curve. Okay, I'm ready. Go for it. Dawn, I would like to know what your philosophy of life is. Goodness. Well, truly, I really do believe that that whole go with what you know, use what you've got, what comes around goes around, um, do unto others. Those are my three main mantras in life. I do believe that what you put out there comes back to you in time or right away. Um, and share what you know with people. People want to know, and there are other people out there who aren't as creative as maybe the next person, but they're equally as excited about what they want to do. And if you can just help them get the idea and the juices flowing, then they pick up on it and they're able to do stuff for their family and their kids and share. And it's so simple to tie a half hitch knot and make something like this. It's something you can share with everyone. So... And I have this feeling that you do share with everyone that you meet. I do. I this do. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. Good. And thank you all for joining me, and I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me. Start early, July. You've only got a few months left till Christmas. <laughs>